Hello, and welcome to another side play. The game of six of I Promise. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, you can get it for free. If you go on to Google, type in I Promise, I found it on F95. So, and the last let's play, I guess we might be doing Chris's route? This game does the thing that I can't really think of many other games. I mean, there are other games that do it, but where it's like, you know, I don't know what kind of route I'm on, because let me just go through the list of games I'm doing right now. Echo. Yeah, pretty well-defined route. Kimu Coliseum. Well, you're dating a whole bunch of husbands, though, so that's a side thing. Les Charnes? Yeah, that's pretty defined route. Don Course. Pretty defined route. Glory Hounds? I only did one episode, so don't know. Sileo, pretty well-defined route. The Smoke Room, pretty well-defined route. Sugar Lane, again, it's one where you have a whole bunch of... I was going to say husbandos, but that's a straight one, so waifus. But yeah, I think we might be doing Kevin. Smooching him, you know? I don't know. But uh, yeah, so we got him to come out skiing. Skip ahead, skip ahead, blah, blah, blah. Ghost stories, ghost child, all that good stuff. And that's the end of day two, I think? Maybe? Reset face. And begin. Compared to the campfire, it's really quiet inside the lounge. And keep my thing on here. Instead of pressing the enter button. Because, hey, I'll be able to see if there's stuff we can skip. Right. I need to find the white package of marshmallows. Nothing here. Or here, either. It's that guy. Looking for this? Nice. I got lucky. Yes, thank you. I haven't seen him before. Looks like he's probably from the other class. Why is he sitting here all alone? Would you like to join us? We're sitting in the campfire, telling silly ghost stories. He gives me an appraising glance, thinks for a moment, and says, No. I expected a different answer. Aren't you bored here all alone? By the way, I'm Scott. Oh yeah, I guess it would be different because we haven't met him before. Gabriel Royales. Not Royals, but Royales. Nice to meet you. So, still don't want to come? No. But thanks for the offer. Okay, see you. I need to hurry. They're waiting for the marshmallows. I almost, Im almost immediately after Kevin fell asleep, I suspected he's having a nightmare. He mumbles something and tosses and turns in his bed. This is the first time I've seen Kevin like this. I'm not sure what else to do. Wake him up? I think it's better to wake him up. I come closer. He frowns a lot and his forehead is all sweaty. Kevin, wake up! I grab him by the shoulder and shake him a little, but he's not reacting. He said something again and, he, and it took it by surprise. Now I'm worried. I shake him with more force, and he opens his eyes abruptly. Kevin breathes heavily, and stares in the darkness. What? What happened? Scott? Sorry, you scared me, and I... Did... Do you see a bad dream? Yeah. What time is it? Around midnight. He fell asleep a short while ago. I sat down the bed, facing Kevin. It's over, but I'm still a little concerned. What was the dream about? You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Like, here's the thing. I've never seen anybody have, like, a nightmare, but... Because I don't really sleep next to people and usually just fall asleep. But anyways, like... Is it kind of customary to wake somebody up if they seem to be having a bad dream? Anyways, have you ever been under anesthesia? Oh god, isn't the thing where he was conscious while there was anesthesia thing going and they're opening his chest up and stuff? Ooh. No. But you know what it's like, right? I had a dream that didn't work. And I woke up in the middle of surgery. It was really creepy. Creepy? It's a freaking nightmare. Yeah. Why do you even have dreams like that? Dude, you read horror books this morning? No, not at all. I'm not happy myself with these. I'm not happy myself with these. Vivid dreams, okay. 
Is that what you dreamed of? Yeah, is that what you dreamed of? Impossible, really? Anesthesia awareness is extremely rare, but it's possible. It even has a special name. Many more specific things have names. Right, Kevin knows a lot about medicine. No wonder he knows the terminology too. Maybe he heard about such situations and subconsciously remembered? Holy cow, now I just noticed I've done like 35 minutes of videos or maybe 30 minutes of visual novels and that's the first time I've yawned. Something's wrong. Uh, Mysterious remembered. And now it resurfaced in a creepy way. Wake up undergoing surgery. I don't want to even imagine what's like. And then it hits me. Surgery. Kevin's scar on his chest may be from surgery. Could it be that his nightmares are actually from his own experience? Oh, we'll poke. Maybe I'll regret it, but I can't turn back now. What are you dreamed about? Could it be what happened to you? What? No, of course not. I don't even want to think about it. Phew. It's alright then. Now, he looks at me suspiciously. I feel uncomfortable from his gaze. Why did you ask? He hadn't dreamed about it. Dreams rarely relate to reality. Usually, it's just a mess from your subconsciousness. You must have had unpleasant dreams that had nothing to do with your past, too. Something like going to school in only your underwear? I don't think I've ever had that, and rarely do I have nightmares, but one dream that I do remember vividly from childhood, not really a nightmare or not, was when summer would start, I would tend to have dreams where summer had ended. It was like, summer starts, got the summer time, gotta hang with your friend. Oh, back to school. Fuck. You know? Which is weird. Yes, and actually. But still. Still? Shit, he figured out that I'm dodging this question. Sorry. I saw the scar on the chest yesterday and thought that it might be from surgery. Oh, I see. Yes, you guessed right. But the anesthesia worked and the surgery went well. I was right. It was a scar in his upper chest. It must have been heart surgery. That's serious. It was a long time ago. I'm healthy now. Was it scary? Of course. Laying down, knowing that soon, a scalpel will cut you open. You have to entrust your life to a stranger. Nope, you're wrong in that part. My dad performed the surgery, so I knew everything was going to be alright. Is that ethical? I mean, maybe not ethical is the word, but I don't think um, your parents can do the surgery on you. Is that a surgeon? Wow, cool. Okay, that would get my second reading on. It's time to sleep, isn't it? Oh, of course. Sorry I woke you up. No need to be. You did the right thing. Sorry that I scared you. Good night. Sweet dreams, Kevin. I protect your sleep. And then I'm gonna wake up in the middle of the night because of Ghost Child. Ghost Child. Wake up in a great mood. Nothing can screw up Christmas Eve. I get up, stretch, make my bed. Kevin is still sleeping. It's a pity to wake him up, but I can't wait to share my joy. My morning would? Anyways, if I don't do it now, emotions will overfill me and I'll drown. Happy but stupid death. Kevin, good morning! Time to wake up. He shivers and turns the other side. Oh, come on. Look how awesome it is outside. Don't you want to go out there? No. I know you do. Get up. Shut up. Hey! Breakfast is waiting. Amazing, tasty breakfast. It... I can sm... Uh, I can feel it smells from here. That's hard to read. You're so annoying. I wonder how Vincent can stand to you. Vince wakes up earlier. I bet it's just a void. A wake up from Scott. I can wait till night. I, mean, I can't wait till night. Christmas is coming. Also. Alright, alright. You win. I woke up. 
No reason to stay in bed. Today's morning is chill and beautiful, but deceiving. Skipping. No wonder other kids would. Qu uh, Chris and Kevin vanished. Uh, was it the contest? Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm just. I wonder where the other kids went. Chris and Kevin vanished. It might be they went somewhere together. This is mooch. It could also mean they finally get along well. Or they went to have it out. I hope Chris will not hit him. Uh, he wouldn't think twice about getting in a fight. But Kevin is different. I should look for them to call... To calm myself? Yeah. Just a few minutes. Vincent can't return so fast. I won around for a few minutes. Nothing. Almost no people. Everyone must be at the mountain. Kevin, where are you? How about we get together and go tubing? Sent. Oh, I'm tapping in. I should go back to not let Vince eat everything on his own. Damn, he's already back. Sorry, I went to find Kevin. It's okay, I've just returned. After having a snack, I feel almost the happiest cat in the world. Only Kevin, it has not responded yet. I'm worried. Wow, do you have a date? What? Yeah, no, I'm not dating anyone. I'm not dating some guys. Alright, Chris has found himself. I need to catch another one. A boyfriend? Have you seen Kevin? I can't reach him by phone. No, but it's hard. But it's hard to get lost here? Let's find him. With the three of us, we will make it in no time. Chris makes a face. He doesn't want to take part in this. I'll try looking inside. Just tell me what, uh, why the hurry. We'll go tubing, of course. Important. Alright, i meet you here in ten minutes. I'll go this way. As soon as you separate, it starts to snow. Speeding ahead. We want to go tubing. What do you say? He thinks well, considering the pros and cons. Alright, I'm in. But I'd like to eat something foist. Sounds good. Let's go meet the others. And, yeah, they're looking for you, too. We agreed to meet in a certain place. Okay, lead the way. We went towards the diner, in which, which is only three minutes away. They look so happy just now. Really? No. Interesting. I'm glad you enjoy the vacation. Do you like the snowfalls? As any other beautiful nature event? Huh? I thought the snow had special meaning to him. Or something. Michelle likes it. She likes to play with snow, like snowmen or snow angels. His voice turns very warm. I think Michelle looks like an angel even without snow wings. Judging by Kevin's talks, she's a pretty and cool girl. Last year, On sent us for a week to a similar place. But it didn't snow for a while, and Michelle was soaking all at weather all the time. On the last day, the snow started to fall, and snowflakes were huge. The ground was covered quickly. A shell dragged me to the outside, who spent several hours playing. I tried to convince her to get inside many times. In the end, I had to take her on my hand. Take her on my hands, or she'd spend the night in the snow. Take now. Next morning, she had a high fever. I felt guilty, but she only smiled happily at my frowny face. She said it's fine that she got sick because she saw a miracle. She meant snowfall. Meant snowfall. Really, when I saw her looking charmed that the snowflakes fall down, I thought it was a miracle. Small and insignificant to the universe, but so important to me. He stops and blushes a little. Forget it. Why? It's a touching story. I don't want you to think that I... He's embarrassed. I wonder why. He's a good brother. Yeah, it's too late. Okay, I told you that story, but don't think I'm a sentimental whiner. It's alright, you love her. It's normal. He looks at me with doubt. Don't tell anyone. Sure, you can count on me. After that situation with Gweg, he must be afraid that someone again will use his weakness on him. I don't think it's weakness. Family ties. It's great. We had to wait for the others before getting lunch. Speed. 
Uh, what are we doing? I'm tired soon, but Kevin suddenly disappears. I think we kept going last time, so take a rest. We got time. I think it's time to rest. I'm gonna take a break. Who's with me? I'll stay. I can go with you. Uh, what are we gonna do? I'm not sure if we can go down because I want to return here after a while. I have an idea. Minton brings me to a wonderful place. The resort looks so small from here. I bet it looks even better at night, when lamps illuminate with orange light making the place cozy. How do you know this place? I've been here before, remember? I had time to learn the surroundings. It's beautiful. Could you come here for a moment? I'll smooch you. And come to him and find that there are few benches waiting for us. I guess this place is popular enough to accommodate for this. We sit down and look at the beautiful vista again. Sometimes I come here at night. Wow, I thought the cableway doesn't work at night. It doesn't. There's a stairway, though. You've been here with the class? I thought I was not allowed to go at night. Vincent looks confused. Did he break the rules? I never expect that from a reasonable and humble guy like him. I went here alone. He didn't answer the rest of my question. Wow, Vincent's full of surprises. What a lawbreaker. A bad boy. I have to spend some time here. It's calm and beautiful. Suitable for thinking. He looks at me. Or talking to someone nice. I feel blood rushing my cheeks. I'm not used to soft words, and Vince said enough to embarrass me. But I'm glad he did. I like quiet places too. The only downside is if you sit uh, down here too long, you might freeze. Oh, we can go somewhere else. I didn't mean that. That's fine. Anshade Vince is funny. He always worries for nothing, and it makes him cute. Last year, they had spy glasses here. I'm sure they still have them, but it was wrong. You can look at the stars at night. What? Oh. I was sure they still had them, but I was wrong. Starts at night. We're far away from the cities, so visibility is amazing. We spend the next few minutes listening to faraway voices from the tracks and looking at the whiteness. I feel refreshed. It's time to go back. Go back to the track. Well, we went left last time, so let's go right this time. I can still hear the footsteps, but I can't get anywhere close to him. Also, let's just do a safety save, just in case we die. Can't get anywhere close to him. Where is he? I want to run for a few minutes, but realize I'm lost. I'm cold. My fingers feel numb. I should go back, but I've lost my tracks. It's getting harder to walk through the snow. Oh, I see some footprints. I follow them and walk out of the woods. What the... I must have found my own tracks. I can't do it alone. I'm gonna ask for help. So, it says you saw a boy in just a t-shirt entering the woods? When he says it, I understand how stupid it sounds. Stupid. Maybe I was just imagining things? Yes, I insist. Lights are only located near the hotel. You could have noticed anyone in the dark. Are you sure? I mean, he has a cat. I'm not sure. But what if it was him? I can't just leave him like that. Alright, let's go talk with the hotel supervisor. I tell him everything I saw, and they answered with no such... There's no such guest. All registered guests were inside the hotel, and all high schoolers were under the teacher's supervision. I don't even know his name. They convinced me I was seeing things. Now, I think so too. The tent sent two staff members to check the surroundings, but I'm sure it was nothing. Don't worry. He worries about me? Fine. But you failed to do what I asked you to do. Ow. I'm sorry, I forgot. Completely forgot everything I was doing. I'll go get David. Don't bother. Who knows where you might end off again, or wander off again. Vincent will do it. 
My heart beats faster in anticipation. Celebration. Feeling is everywhere. And Christmas spirit fills the room. Uh, just like I dreamed in my childhood. I feel the warmth inside. And I'm happy to... Oh, yeah, wait. Good thing I did that. Because, like, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. I feel sad that I didn't help the ghost child. But maybe sometime later. Let's give it to Kevin since we might be smoozing him. I'll give it to Kevin. He's a good guy. And we'll be happy for sure. I'll call him secretly without attracting attention. I'm gonna give something new. But please, don't tell anyone. I feel ashamed. I've just prepared one part of that guy. God, I hate when you don't, can't sneeze. I feel ashamed that I prepared just one present. I'll give something to the others later. I gave him a small box that has, that was in my pocket the whole time. Well, thank you. Sorry, I don't have anything to give you back. I know, but it's alright. Merry Christmas. Mom's calling. Celebration ended a couple of minutes ago. It's a pity we are going home tomorrow. I got used to the kids in the past few days and certainly like to spend some more time with them. I put my presents near my bag and quickly grabbed the last box from inside it. I was eager to open it in the last few hours. I don't know what's inside. I take Tim's present and unwrap it. A book. A second book in one day. Dragons of Spring Eclipse. I haven't read it. Looks promising. I'm glad to spend the last few evenings reading it. Maybe even weeks. I didn't turn on the lights, but the cover still looks beautiful even in the darkness. I almost put the, it back in the bag when I noticed a small sheet of paper fall on the floor. A letter? Hello, Scott. I hope you remembered to my request and open it on Christmas. The book tells about hard times and heroes of... We've read this before. You have a light... Believe in the power of others, too shy to tell people take care of vibrant hearts, running with the lights too. Merry Christmas, Tim. Arms gets a beat. It's a crafty mouse, words of Christmas. I need to calm myself down too. I think present quality. I have my presents. Friends are the best. I jump from Kevin's voice. Are you sleeping? No. Can't sleep too? It's kind of late. Yeah. I got tired of laying, doing nothing. Can't stand it. Scared of your own thoughts? I didn't expect such words from you. Why? You seem so careless, I guess. Does it mean stupid? I don't, it's not the first time someone said I gave the impression I'm not a too clever guy. It hurts. It's unusual for me. This evening was better than I expected. I'm a little embarrassed. Why? I was thinking I'd regret not spending the evening with Michelle, but in reality, I completely forgot about her. Just remembered now. It's great, actually. She'd be happy to know you had fun. I'm sure she had fun, too. Yeah, you're right. She missed them. Do you? You're completely out of tact. You know that? <laughs> yeah, that's me. No, I don't miss them. Sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Do you miss your mom? Yeah. But it's alright. I was happy to spend this evening with everyone. Did miracles happen? Sort of. Speaking of which, tonight at the fireplace with everyone, I felt something magical. Like a real family. Tell me about your dad. Kevin sighs heavily. I have a father. He used to be a surgeon. I don't know what he does now. He goes to sleep early and wakes up early. Always reading a book and using his tablet PC. Always busy. Once in my childhood, he took us to the aquarium. It was great. Do you love him? No. Oof. Somehow his answer hurts. I don't even know his dad, but still. I always wondered what it's like to have a father. I think you're boggling. What's that mean? Do you really need to talk about it? I told you too much of my private life. Enough. Oop. Damn, I just kicked the same thing over again. He turns his back to me. 
I just have like ice water here because like it's kind of I mean it's not hot but it's still kind of warmish I can't help but keep my mouth shut uh, wait, why can't I keep my mouth shut my own complexities didn't be shouldn't be above his feelings should be ashamed of myself I mean, the music just stopped, so safety save? Just be like, hey, sorry. I must apologize. Yeah, I'm sorry. I guess I just envy you. There's nothing to be envious about. Now I feel guilty. It hurts his- I hurt his feelings. But apology accepted. I start- wait, I started it myself, so it's not your fault for being curious. Yeah, <laughs> I try to keep my curiosity at bay. Try. Uh, you say you share too much of your private life with me. I don't think so. It's great you trust me. Because I trust you too. Except for that time you tried to, you know, drug me and I died. After all that happened? Thank you. For real. Good night. But don't worry. I'm not angry. Nothing like that. Then turn your face to me. He does it without any enthusiasm. Happy? Definitely. You can sleep tightly now. Sweet dreams. I hope he didn't lie, and he's hold a grudge against me. Hobo story. Twenty years ago, but I don't know. We so giving her the present doesn't make her uh, mm, horrible story. And didn't like how those women discussed it. Hope Ollie's mother will be fine. Oh no, I just left Chris. Wait, I left Chris for, for just a few minutes, and he's in a quarrel again. At least it looks like this. Or what? At least it looks like this. He's talking to Gabriel, the guy I met two days ago. I can't hear their talk. Oh well, at least they're not shouting each other. I sighed to wait to hear and not to feel. After a while, Gabriel gives a business card to Chris and leaves. What was that? Also, Gabriel smooched him. Nothing. Your friend? Long story. You have a long trip home. Not this time. He turns back and goes on the bus. Have you decided to live here? Come on in. We didn't get any smooches! Okay. What happens if we wait? I wait like a hunter in ambush. Chris is still silent. The more I wait, the more I realize I lost a moment to apologize. Are you asleep? I know you didn't have a father, and you probably think that having both parents is all you need to be happy. You're wrong. His voice is so weak. It almost feels like a whisper. We were a usual normal family. Lived a quiet life. It changed one day, and it was hard. Now I understand that shit happens. But back when I was just a kid, you should learn that family is not a simple thing. You can't trust anybody. I broke Kevin for this difficult talk. And I feel and I feel how hard it is for him. I feel ashamed. Especially since I still don't have that despicable envy in my heart. Where still? Yeah. Better to know. I think it's better to know that good things happen to you. Did you have it in your life? Of course it did. That's what I'm saying. It's better not to have it at all than to lose something. You're wrong. You can get everything back. They're alive. You can still start new. You know nothing, Scott. You shouldn't give such careless advice. You entrusted Michelle to them. That means they're not half bad. Enough. But, ugh. He threw his pillow at me. I guess it just made him really angry. 
I agitate myself. I get on my blanket and sit down on his bed, taking his pillow with me. I just can't leave it hanging, or we'll lose the fragile trust uh, we managed to find. I'm sorry. I don't want to teach you something. I can't. I don't know anything myself. I never had a family like you. I never will have. I don't know what it's like. You do. It's tough. Now, but I... But it still could be better, right? If you make the first step. Kevin jumps on his bed. His face come close to mine. He's angry, and so... Defenseless. Why should I? They should, said his eyes. His shoulders tremble, and I feel like he's either going to cry or hit me. He looks like a wounded animal. I come close to him, and our foreheads touch. He jumps from surprise, but doesn't back off. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. I didn't want it. But remember, it's a day of miracles today. Please, believe in one. At least little. Miracles don't come to my kind of people. Why don't you think so, or do you think so? Miracles are for people like you. Pure, naive, rapturous. You're always eager, eager to fight without recon. Eager to interfere without knowing if you, if your help is needed. I don't know if what happens. I don't know what happens in your head. Why are you trying to convince me it's not that bad? It seems. Why do you care? Why do I care? I never thought about it. I don't need anything in return. I just, I just want you to be happy. So sentimental. He laughs a little, and my heart warms up. He's not angry anymore. We didn't cross a line of no return. That's all right. As far as that, how much weight has been lifted off my shoulders? You have a wonderful sister who loves you so much. Your parents. You're right. I don't know what happened, but they're still alive. I think they still care for both of you. Just give them time. It's so easy living in your world. Sorry, that's just how I am. No need to be sorry. It's an interesting trait, and I find it attractive. It makes you special. He backs off a bit, and her eyes meet. You never respect personal space, don't you? And you're the one who came, eh, who can make me angry so much. So, I'm the worst? Not at all. He gives me a wide smile, and Kevin slyly smiles back, but I give him a smile. I didn't notice before how secretive he is. He carefully protects his feelings, never showing them to anyone. He's allowed me to see. It excites me, and my heart beats faster. Kevin opened up to me. He sits in front of me, open and fragile, and I can't help but myself realize one desire burns in my head. Something whispers to me, and I have to do it, that I want to do it. I can't, and I didn't want to struggle against it. <laughs> Smooching boys. I approach him with care and raise my face a little. 33 minutes? Okay. Even sitting here, he's still a bit taller. I still realize he's a little is scared a little, knowing what's going to happen. Our lips touch, and I close my eyes, giving up myself to emotions. He doesn't refuse me. He waits for more. His response is light. I'd even say timid, but sincere. It tells me so much more than unreserved lust could. My heart beats even faster. Kevin breaks our kiss by pushing his palms on my chest. His misty eyes and blushing face be uh, beckon me to continue. What was that? A kiss. I know. What does that mean? I come to my senses and realize what just happened. What have I done? I have never had any desires like that before. Bullshit. You, you can't go through the previous game without either A, smooching the um, Vince, or smooching Chris, or dying, or getting sent to jail, or I guess having somebody killed. Yeah. I was never attracted so much to anyone, especially a guy. 
did his defenselessness make me do it? Even now, he looks at me s stunned. I feel so... Even now, when he looks so stunned, I feel how much I'm attracted to him. I don't know what came to me. The worst thing is I don't feel any shame. I think it's time for you to return to your bed. He started talking seriously, but in the end, he stutters and, confuse and confuses. I think I made him lose his internal balance. I quickly heard at my bed to not embarrass him further. I feel like a predator attacking an unsuspecting deer and smooching him. Good night? Yes, yes, go to sleep already. You boy smoocher. Yeah, like hell I will. After what just happened. Nope. Morning surprise the cold and sleepiness comes. Yeah. The reminiscence of yesterday fills my head, even more so last night. I feel the blood rush on my cheeks. Last night, I kissed Kevin. I still have no idea of what came to me. Well, your boy kissing desires. Was even scariest. I don't know what to do now. I need to figure out my own feelings, find out what he feels. How should I act? Cool, buddy. I hope Kevin won't hate me. We seriously don't really talk to Kevin? Well, okay. Well, I got Boy Spoocher number two. So you got these two talking, which is kind of weird. That's just like, eh, we're just kind of talking over here. We got a really sad mother, which... I feel sorry for you, lady. I don't know why she's there, though. It's like, does she live there, or did she decide to come back every year, or on the 20th year? And then there's these two guys. I think he smooches him, but without actually smooching him there. And he smooches there. We still got two more boys to smooch. But it's going to be another night for me, and another week for you. So, end of this side play. So please comment, cause like comment, send me like, dislike, tips as always. If you like me, YouTube and like to grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out the videos to help it grow. And please remember to remain new animals to help control the pet population. And if you're interested in playing this game, it's available for free. If you look on Google and go to F95 Zone. And until next time, another side play. Me, Game of Six, of I promise. So thanks since the uh, hiccups.